We're joined now by the chairman of the House Homeland Security Committee, Michael McFall. Congressman McCall, can you please tell us the enormity of this arrest? What does it really mean to the average American? This is a significant victory for both Mexico and the United States. This is the world's most notorious drug lord that got taken down. He's really the godfather, if you will, of the cartels. Uh, that has brought so many, smuggled so many drugs into the United States, killed so many people in Mexico and around the world, and to, to bring him uh, to justice finally, after so many decades, uh, is, is a great victory. And I do want to take a chance to applaud the ICE agents, the DEA agents who worked this case, and also the Mexican authorities who have stepped up to the plate and showed great cooperation with the United States to, to make this happen. This is a, a huge event. Um, it's sort of like, you know, uh, again, the godfather of the Al Capone of Chicago. In Chicago, he's the number one enemy. Uh, and uh, it, it'd be similar to Pablo Escobar in Colombia being taken down, after which the drug cartels began to unravel. Well, given, given what you've said, Chairman McCall, the Mexican ambassador to the U.S. said that he thinks it's important that Guzman first be tried in Mexico. Would you like to see him extradited to the United States? I would. I, I think the normal uh, sequence is uh, the uh, Mexico, being a sovereign nation, has the first uh, prosecution. However, there's a history here. He escaped from a prison uh, in 2001. Uh, there is corruption uh, in that country. And I would ask that the Mexicans consider extraditing him to the United States, where he will be put in a supermax prison under tight security where he cannot escape. Uh, and be brought to justice with a life imprisonment uh, sentence. Uh, I think that would be the best course for not only uh, Mexico, but also the United States in, in ensuring that what happened in 2001 does not happen again. And, and what's the likelihood of that happening? And I can see why you would feel that way, because he escaped from prison 13 years ago. What's the likelihood that they would allow him to come up here in a supermax prison? Well, I think it depends on how much uh, pressure our State Department, quite honestly, and our administration puts uh, on the current administration to, to do this. Um, I, you know, I think their preference, again, would be to try him first in the United States, but the track record's not good with this individual. This is an exceptional case. Yeah, this is the, the largest, uh, biggest drug lord we've ever seen in the world. And therefore, I think extradition to the United States, where there are multiple indictments in multiple cities, San Diego, New York, in Texas, and Chicago, where we could deal with him uh, in a secure, safe way uh, and bring him to justice. And one final point I think is important to make. There were early criticisms on this administration in Mexico uh, that they were going to be soft on the cartels. And I think what, what has happened here is very significant in terms of the cooperation uh, with Mexico. President uh, Peña Nieto has demonstrated that he is, he, he is tough on these cartels. He brought out the Los Zetas leader, who's uh, arguably the most lethal cartel, and now uh, the, biggest, the biggest fish ever, and that is El Chapo Guzman. Okay, thank you very much, Chairman McCall. We appreciate you joining us. Let's bring in our experts now. Pierre is back with us, along with David Aguilar, the former Customs and Border Protection Commissioner, who for more than a decade you tracked Guzman, and investigative reporter Mariana Von Zeller from our sister network, Fusion, who has covered Guzman extensively. I want to start with you, Commissioner. You had what they call an intimate intelligence relationship with Guzman, which means there was not a day that went by in your 10 years tracking him day and night, day and night. just your reaction to having him captured when you heard that. Uh, Martha, Pierre, first of all, thank you for having me this morning. And the reaction was one of relief, one of relief and tremendous achievement on the part of our Mexican friends and neighbors to the south. The fact that they were able to take him down the way that they did by not firing one shot, that tells me that the intelligence, the tracking, the operationalization of that intelligence that we had done for so many years was carried out in exactly the way that we all hope and pray that these things go down. Well, tell, Officer tell, me safety, a little, tell, tell me a little bit about what that was like during those 10 years, how you did it, how you track them, what the communications are like. Well, the communications are critical, especially between the law enforcement entities and agencies involved, both domestically and internationally. In this case, it was Mexican assets that actually, uh, that actually took the front, the front line, took the point on this situation. 
When this happened, the intelligence all came together. They were able to make it happen with officer safety at the, as a primary perspective. Marianne, I want to turn to you. Why was Guzman so successful as a, as a drug lord? What did he do differently? Well, this is a guy who in less than a decade was able to transform an, a startup operation into a multinational criminal organization. I mean, he was business-minded, business-oriented. He was creative, submarines, um, um, tunnels, you name it. He figured out new ways of bringing drugs into the United States. Submarines. In Chicago, well, submarines, indeed, and tunnels. I got to visit one of these tunnels, and it was quite amazing. I mean, 60 feet down, 700 feet across, connecting the U.S. to Mexico. Everything from uh, ventilation to electricity was uh, took over a, a million dollars to build over a year, and the law enforcement told, told us that it would take about a month to make all that money back, just from the drugs being um, taken here into the United States. And as we've really heard, he really focused on Chicago. Why is that? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Chicago has the fourth or fifth largest Mexican population outside of Mexico. And it is sort of the ideal center, distribution center, to have drugs uh, um, shipped across the Midwest. And pretty early on in 2006, he decided he wanted to make Chicago his distribution center, even though it's alleged that he's never actually stepped foot in the city. Was there any time, Commissioner, that you came close to catching him? There were several times. There were several times that actually uh, the international law enforcement community came close, but very cagey individual, an individual that had a tremendous amount of support and infrastructure built up to escape and evade. Now, one of the things that is absolutely critical here is that the relationship that has been built up between Mexico and the United States over the last decade is what got us to where we are today. Now, we must bear in mind that there will be an effort to fill the void left by this by this individual. The fight will continue. We are not finished. But that relationship is absolutely critical and foundational to continue to impact on these international criminal organizations. Which is exactly what I was going to ask you, Pierre. Who fills that void? How quickly is that void filled? How long does this disrupt? He has a number of lieutenants and rivals who will try to take care, uh, fill that void. But one official told me yesterday, you have to think of these cartels as major corporations. In other words, if the head of McDonald's was captured or taken off the grid tomorrow, they'd still be flipping burgers. So they're still going to be trying to make and sell those drugs into the United States. And, and how fast do you think the void's filled? Uh, the effort is ongoing now. It is happening as we speak. But what this brings to the international law enforcement community is a point of vulnerability. We must exploit that vulnerability that now exists because of this head of the snake being cut off. This was a tremendous success, tremendous achievement. I can guarantee you that the international law enforcement community is celebrating what our Mexican friends did. And will probably have an impact on crime in Chicago. I certainly Absolutely. hope so. Thanks, everyone.